Hello Trappers, Ed Snyder with Kansas Trap Line Products bringing you this new YouTube video. Today's video, and I believe I'll have to break it up into a couple of videos, it's actually uh, quite a bit to, uh, to discuss, uh, but that is putting up fur. It's not enough as a trapper just to catch the coyotes. That's the fun stuff, you know, going out of the line and finding sign and putting up, uh, putting in sets and then, you know, the whole management plan of it. Putting up fur is important. And in this video, I'm going to take you from the time that I, that we put them in the freezer, thawing out and uh, processing it. I show how I flesh the coyote and uh, the whole process, putting it, boarding it etc etc so anyway uh, if you like the videos that you see uh, that I bring into you please click subscribe it's a uh, very uh, good to have you along and uh, as always I try to get a video out once a week uh, but sometimes it's two weeks and stuff so as we get into the season uh, more videos will pop up as I get more information as I uh, learn new stuff I try to share them right here on YouTube and uh, of course Facebook and other uh, methods so anyway Thank you very much. Uh, please be safe and uh, please especially stay healthy. All right, folks, we've had a beautiful season. Uh, I want to talk about how I freeze my coyotes. We're on the road, space is limited. I realize that a lot of people roll them up in a Walmart bag or something or a shopping bag. But what I want to talk about is how we do it. We originally put them in the freezer and lay them flat. We do one layer at a time. If there's too much fur, and many times there is, to actually uh, put all the animals in, most nights on our trap line it gets down below freezing, so we lay the other fur that doesn't fit in the freezers uh, down flat on the ground. The next day we simply pick it up, it's semi-frozen, and then we turn it around and we just lay it in, kind of tucking the head in and tucking the tail in, making sure there's no, there's no exposed bait to it. But this way we can get more fur in, but we want to freeze one layer at a time. We don't want to get hot spots inside of the freezer. Ed Snyder here in the fur room. We've had a great season. It's been fabulous. Uh, but I want to take care of this beautiful fur. I'm currently working with our New Mexico stock right now and just getting into some Kansas uh, fur that we got. Uh, one of the things we do is I wash the fur and I let it hang overnight. Uh, I'll show you that. The second thing is I want to talk about some basic principles when it comes to fleshing. Uh, it does take some practice. It, uh, in this case, I'm using a double handle knife. Uh, but one of the things is, is that I did wrong in the early days is I would lift it up and I would, I would lift, push, lift, push, lift, push. And I found out, you know, real quick that wasn't going to work. You know, you end up gouging it, you end up maybe making cuts. Here are some simple principles for you. What you want to do is always keep this tight. You want to, and the second thing is, is always work in the center of your beam. Don't go chasing. <coughs> do not go chasing the fur on the outside, on the outside edges. You're going to get a cut out of that. So here's some proper tips I can give you. When you're working around the neck head area, and you have to be careful with it, on a double-edged knife, you want to use the sharp side. And the second thing is, is just go real easy. You don't have to go very fast. You know, speed is up to your skill. That's what that's about. And you slice. You slice. You keep it flat. Let's just say I get a bunch in it. Pull it up. Tighten it up. Don't get yourself to where you're working all the way down here and everything. What you want to do is always keep your work in a relative area. Now, some of the things that I see with... Uh, trappers also is to make sure that uh, uh, you keep your uh, your blade clean always keep wiping that off don't do that if it bunches up straighten it back out rotate your work rotate your work as you're working on it this is a little softer so I can use the uh, the flat side of the knife use a much uh, 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 less sharp edge and push that old stuff right on down out of there. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll uh, flush this animal, flush this coyote, and I'll show you my work when I'm done. Okay. I think we got it knocked out. I'll, I'll knife a little bit. Uh, but this is my hide right here. 
and uh, I think it looks pretty good. You know, it's uh, I got the I got all the flesh taken off. Uh, just a couple of things, like I said, when we're scraping, uh, proper motion for me is to uh, take. And I'm talking about up around the neck area. As soon as you feel that fatty substance and you can get underneath of it, spin your double-edged knife and just spin it down. I think you're going to be very happy with that. The second thing is I want to say is uh, as far as slicing, go like this, but kind of keep it dragging back when you go to cut it. Drag it back when you this this hide's done so there isn't anything to really pull up. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I need to put this on a, on a stretcher. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, folks, we got our, we got our pelt done. Uh, I, I'm using a uh, wood stretcher for putting up my coyote pelts. So let's take a look at this. And uh, I usually start out, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I usually start out where the tail is on the opposite side of me, whatever, whatever method you do best. And slide that pelt right on. Now there's always a little bit of knife work. For me, I always usually knife the fur a little bit. And I'm not trying to change the, let me turn this around. I'm not trying to change the direction or the, the length of the fur. I've already taken the coyote. I, I don't believe there that changing the length is going to help me. Uh, I'm not. All I want to do is make sure that this animal dries. Let me go ahead and use one of my push pins. Let's stick that in. Get my coffee out of the way. I want to make sure the alignment of the coyote <coughs> is nice and square. I don't want them shifted over. And that type of thing. Make sure that the ears are where they need to be. Okay, that's done. Let me go ahead now. I'm going to flip this guy over. And we're going to get them legs. And everything that we flesh, we don't want hit, we don't want the fur rolling over, right? So make sure you when you pin it. that you have the, the legs so that the fur will not roll back onto the skin. We want to have a product when we're done. We want to have a product that it, uh, is not losing fur when, we go to, uh, when it goes to auction or goes to the fur buyer. Whatever your form of marketing is. Let me do that. Grab a few more. For filming this, I, I'm going a little bit on the other end of the table, but I want to give you the best light that I can. So what I did is I pinned my legs right here. I pinned those. I got my tail pinned. It's time to spread the fur. Coyotes are really easy. It's not hard to put up a coyote. You know, uh, check my fur harvesters or your fur buyers. Uh, as far as how wide that they accept fur. I don't think that all standards of fur uh, apply. I have coyotes that they, as an example, let's just say that nine inches is the width, and they're talking about down here at the hips, nine inches is the width. The fact is there's coyotes out there that would be flopping on the, that would simply be flopping on the, uh, uh, on the stretcher if we went nine inches. So uh, you need to get the animal stretched, but not over stretched. The next thing I want to do, and I'll move this out of the way, is I want to go ahead and trim some of that skin that uh, up around my ears. I can, I can do that. There we go. Do the same thing on the other ear. There's always going to be a little bit, for, in my case anyway, perhaps you're a better flusher, and uh, there'll always be a little bit of skin left over. 
Same way, just kind of look at your pelt. If you see a little bit of extra sinew, take that off. That looks pretty good. And uh, same thing down here at the belly. Make sure you have, here's a little bit, not much. A good flushing job, it just, it does a nice job on it. Let me go ahead here. There we go. A little bit. I don't want to cut into that skin. There we go. So I want to go ahead and pin my leg openings closed. It's just, I don't think it's required, but it's, uh, it's something I like. So I'm going to go ahead and close that little leg opening. You do not need a long leg. Uh, maybe if you're going to go for a hanging, a hanging fur. The other thing is I'm going to get rid of this bottom lip, what's left of it. I'm using a, a weeby uh, soft handle knife here. It's a great little knife, uh, nice and sharp. Uh, they're easy to sharpen. So there we go. I think I got my kind of done. I think it's ready to hang up. Uh, the other thing I can do right now, and here that borax is that I've been ignoring and stepping over, is I might <coughs> put a little bit of borax around the ears. If you uh, skin out your, if you skin out your uh, cartilages, which I don't, but if you do, uh, uh, it'll take, uh, it'll dry a lot faster. This pelt has been clean, uh, has been clean shaven. It looks great. It's going to dry fast. I'll be back out here in about six to eight hours turning this high. So the main thing is, is I have a fan. It's moving the air in this room. I also am keeping the temperatures of 65 degrees. That's where I'm at on fur management. I have my, uh, my pelt. It looks good, it's skin good, or flesh good, so what, what's nice is, is you don't want to wait too long on something like this. You want to make sure and kind of keep checking it, you know, take your bare hands and check for the wet areas. The wet areas are always going to be around the ears and it's always going to be around the, the front leg. So we gotta, that's where a good place for borax to be. It's a good, it's a, uh, it's a very rewarding when you get all the work done. I think it adds value to my fur. I think it'll add for, uh, value to yours as well. Okay, before I begin any of my process uh, with my fur, uh, um, I got my coyote, uh, but there's a lot of dirt. There's uh, perhaps a little bit of blood. Um, the animals, it's a little bit, you can see a little bit right here where it's kind of caked up. So anyway, one of the things we do is uh, I wash my fur and I'll lay them right here. And this is an old, old washing machine. Uh, out in my shop, and uh, anyway, you, you know, we got some beautiful fur, we just want it to stand out uh, in order to retain the best price. So, we get here to Mane and Tail Shampoo. It's been recommended by many others, uh, many other trappers. So anyway, I've been doing uh, three to four coyotes in a wash. I turn right around and I put two ounces of the Mane and Tail in with the wash, and the, uh, there we go. And then the next thing I do is I have just the cold water here. That's what I want to run it on is uh, on your settings. You want to go cold, cold. Uh, you also, you, you can adjust it for the size of fur you have in there. That depends on what, however many furs you put in. And then the last thing is I put it on the delicate cycle. Uh, I'll show you that, but you want to put it on the delicate cycle. That way it, 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 it does not overwork the fur. The thing I want to say about it before I turn this on is understand that you don't want to let leave wet fur in the uh, in the uh, wash machine once you once it's done. You want to get it out and get it hanging up and get it drying as soon as possible to prevent fur slippage on your pelt. So I got my fur out of the wash machine. Now it's time for me to go ahead and hang him up. I want to have good separation. I'm going to put it in an area of my shop that the fur can turn right around and uh, uh, drain properly, go right into my drain. It's a, this is the best thing I can do to help preserve the quality of the fur that I have, uh, to make it clean, make it stand out. These are really shiny. And the wash machine is nice because it really wrings out the fur. That's one of the reasons I like it versus just trying to hand wash it. So let me get these put up so they can start draining. We've already flushed the coyotes. 
It's time now to start thinking about how we handle the fur all the way through the process. Uh, I want to make sure there that we have a good understanding. It's good to have good organizational skills when you're out here uh, putting up your fur. You want to be able to give the fur a chance to dry properly. I keep my temperature in my room about 65 degrees. I have a fan blowing on my new hides as they come across. The first thing I want to do is look, take a look at the finished product here. This is about day four for me on, the, on each one of my hides. That's about how long it is. When we take the fur off, we want to make sure that the fur itself is, is dry. And one of the ways we can do that is we can feel on the inside of the, inside of the fur. Now understand also, leaving the fur on too long, I am concerned about overdoing it when you got wood stretchers, even wire stretchers to some degree, because the wood is trapping a little bit of the moisture in. Uh, but it's very simple uh, to take fur off. I take off approximately about seven to eight coyotes a day. That's how many stretchers I have. And I take the fur off. And you should get this nice paper crinkly type of assistant uh, to your fur. I've already brushed it out. I'll still tumble this before I'm done. But this is a nice completed fur. It's really nice. It's got good, good fur quality all the way down in here into the flank. Um, all in all, just a super coyote. Let's take a look at a coyote that, I'm, that I did yesterday. We need to turn this high. Now there's a little bit here that's not quite done. I'm gonna put a little borax to it. Let's take a look at what I got on my hide. Take the tail off. This is a good, this is a good coyote here. There we go. Take this. Set this down. Now what I'm going to do, let me turn the camera around here. There we go. What I want to do is um, I, I, I can wipe down. Let me wipe down the hide a little bit. Let's remove any grease that still may be accumulated. Same thing here on our belt. Uh, but what I might do is I take just a little bit of borax. Now, not a lot of this is going to stick, but if it's moist, it will go ahead and stick. Put that on there, especially this little flank area there. It's not totally dry. Gather that out, make sure everything is covered. Check my ears, that looks pretty good. So basically what we have here is this area here. This way I don't have to worry about it molding. I don't have to worry about fur slipping. Uh, I can't wait until it's totally dry or I'll never get it to turn. This has a nice leathery feel to it. It's not hard to turn a hide um, when you're in the process. Just stick the ears in. If you wait too long, or if you don't get the head cleaned up enough, you're going to struggle a little bit on turning the hide. Uh, you, you'll definitely know the difference because hides that I have, in, in my early days, hides that I left too much on, uh, some gristle, some little layer of membrane, all of that makes this a difficult process. But I like to clean flesh my hide, and I just keep turning it. Pushing it in. When you get it down here to about the legs, I can reach in and start pulling it out with much more, with a lot more speed. And again, my process was washing the coyote, hot, coyote let it hang for 24 hours, or at least, at least 18 hours anyway, and, and uh, let it air dry. And, uh, Flush it, clean flush it, 
There we go. It turned real nice. A little bit of a pink belly, but I can't change that. There we go. Make sure my head is square enough. Pull that to the side. I don't need the borax. I don't need the paper towels. Okay. Paper towels took care of themselves. Let me put this on. So I have my pelt, right now it's off the stretcher, it's brushed out, it looks pretty good. We can leave it as, at this, but I think if you, if you can drum it, I think you're going to be happy with it. One of the things I'm using, if I can get it, this is corn cob, uh, uh, pelleted corn cobs. There's other mediums out there such as walnut holes, there's some other great ideas. Talk to your fur buyer, see what they want. I like the little bit of oil that comes off of the cobs. It gives them a little bit of a sheen to it. So let me put this in here. We're going to turn this on. Close it up. Now this will run for approximately about 12 minutes. I'm turning it at a revolution of 18.6 revolutions per minute. That's the speed I'm looking to do. I'll show you the inside of the tumbler here in a minute. But, uh, it has some baffles in it. Uh, so you can get that fur. You want it to go slow enough that the fur goes up and drops back down, up and drops back down. That gets the material freed up. It's constantly cleaning and shining up our fur, lifting that fur to the, to the luxurious state. That's what we're after. like my tumbler is done so let me go ahead and uh, bring it around. Just, for that, just want to knock off some grit that may be on my door. Pull this up. I just don't want to break the hinge on my door. Let me pull out my fur and let's take a look at it. How does it look? We'll shake that off right there. Give it a nice whip here. Boy, that just turned out beautiful. This pelt is just ready to go right now. Just a fabulous New Mexico coyote. I believe it, it really made that fur stand up. It's just, it just gorgeous. So we got our guard hairs standing up. We got our under fur lifted off of it by pelt. We have a nice, clean, dry pelt. So it's just a really nice way to manage our fur Get them, uh, get them uh, to market in the best possible uh, scenario so this way this fur can be uh, uh, add some value to our pocketbook as well. So anyway, really came out nice. Now this is uh, some of our New Mexico fur that we've already put up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm just letting them harden on the, on the uh, face. We have temperatures right now outside. Uh, running uh, just close to freezing. Uh, so anyway, they look good. Uh, those are definitely ready to set.